This video tutorial is brought to you by TipSquirrel.com. For all the best Photoshop and Lightroom tips, follow at TipSquirrel on Twitter or go to Facebook.com slash TipSquirrel. Hi everybody, Mike Hoffman here with the final installment in my Pen Tool series using the Pen Tool in Photoshop. If you haven't watched the previous videos, I'd encourage you to go back and do that. And I've given a list of the previous videos in the notes for this blog post on TipSquirrel. If you've made it this far through the series, congratulations! You're ready to take on almost any masking task using the Pen Tool in Photoshop. In this video, we're simply going to look at an application in which we'll be able to use the skills that we've learned and developed over the past few episodes. Here we're looking at an image from Shutterstock.com, and we're looking at a micrometer here on the page with a ball bearing. And I want to extract this micrometer and the ball bearing from the background. Now this image presents some challenges using the typical Photoshop masking tool, such as the Quick Selection tool. If we try to use the Quick Selection tool on this image, there are just too many things going on with all the lines and the busy background. We simply can't easily select this image from the background. This is a job for the Pen tool. So I'm going to press P to get to the Pen tool, and we're ready to start. Now where do we begin? You simply need to pick a starting point and a direction. And in this case, I'm going to choose this corner right down here on the tip of the micrometer, and I'm going to work my way around in a clockwise direction, and that's just my preference. So to start out with, I'm going to zoom in much more closely so we can see the exact point that needs to be picked. And I'm going to select right here just inside of the perimeter of this micrometer. Remember, we don't have to be exact. We just want to keep inside of the border to avoid picking up any of the background. So I'll put a point there, and I'll make this a somewhat curved point. And I'll put another one right there, and that way we get the curve on this edge. Now we'll move up here, and this is mostly straight, all the way up to about this point. So I'll drop a point in here, and maybe bend it just a little bit. And then I'll drop another point right here. That point is a little bit off, so I'm going to hold the Control key down. That's the Command key on a Mac, and switch to the White Arrow tool. And I'm just going to move this point over just a little bit. Then I'm going to pick the next point right about there. And I'll continue moving around. Here we've got another little bit of a jog. So I'll create a little bit of a curve point, drop another point, and then come up here and hit the corner. Again, this one is a little bit off, so I'm going to switch to the white arrow again and move this one over just a bit. Okay, we'll select this one once again and we're ready to keep moving. So I'll put a curve point right in here and then a curve point right here and I'll drag it to make sure that we follow the contour. I'll drop the next point right here another corner point, and we've got some straight areas. Again, we can adjust these as we need to if we want to position them a little more accurately. Now here we've got a nice curve. I'm going to attack this in sections, so I'm going to put one point right here, and I'll make sure we're following the curve. And again, I'm dragging in the direction that I'm traveling here. I'll put a second one right here and maybe move it over just a little bit and then end the curve right there. We'll just go ahead and bring this down, put a short curved section right in here, and notice that wherever we have a curve, I'm bounding it on both sides. I found that's the easiest way to make sure that we're constraining this path to the shape of the object. Here we've got another curved section, so I'm going to drop one point in here, drag to follow the curve, I'll put the second point up here, and then I'll click to create a corner point here on the end. We'll come down here with a few more corner points. Here we've got another curve. So you can see I'm just following my way around this object picking corner points and curve points as I need to. Now here we come to a little bit of detail. 
And it's easy to get bogged down with too much detail. But remember that this is going to be kind of small, so we don't need to worry so much about how it looks. A few little corner points serve us well. We'll drag a curve point for the dome top and drop some corner points in here. Notice that when I get to this thread of this screw, I'm just going to do a zigzag shape because it's much too small to be noticed in the final image. I'll put a corner point here. And I'm holding the spacebar down to switch to the hand tool as I move around the object. I'll drop a corner point here, one here, and one here. And we'll just keep moving around this object. This one's a little bit out of position, so I'll just drag it over a little bit more. We'll go back here and continue where we were. Here we'll create a zigzag pattern along the edge of this knurled knob. And we've got that taken care of. We'll continue working our way around, adding more corner points for the straight areas. And now we've reached the edge. I'm going to come right off the edge of the document here. And I'll pick it back up here close to the bottom. And then we can work our way back up the other side. Notice again, I'm keeping the path just inside of the edge of the object to avoid picking up any of the background. But I'm following the contour enough to keep the shape consistent with the object that we're working with. Notice the strategy as I place the points. And as I switch to the white arrow tool occasionally to reposition a point if it seems out of place. Here we'll put a curved point in here and a straight point. And now we can go back to our little zigzag pattern to get the edge of the screw here. We could get bogged down in the details here, but again, for the resolution that we're working at, this little zigzag pattern is going to work out just fine. Put a bit of a curve there, bit of a curve there, and here. We'll continue working our way around here, and we're almost back to the beginning. We'll do a little bit of a jog there with some more corner points, and here the straight edge seems to end right about there. I'll reposition that point, and now we're back to the end of the caliper. We'll come in here and drop a point here. That may need to move over just a little bit. And now we come around the edge of this bearing. Try to use fewer points on the curved sections. But keep in mind that having a few extra points will help you to follow the curve a little more accurately. We'll come down here and we'll close this path. And now we've got our path created. I want to move this one point just a little bit, so I'll do that. And now here's our path. I'll double click the hand tool to zoom back out, and we can see that we've got our path created. And if I go to the paths panel and pull it out here, we can see that we've got our work path. Now I'm going to double click on this just to save it and make sure we don't lose it. But at this point, we're ready to try a mask. So we can control click or command click on a Mac right here on the path thumbnail and we load this as a selection. Now if we click down here in the layers panel to create a layers mask we can see that we've done a pretty good job. We've got a couple sections here that we're going to have to take care of where we need to remove some of the interior section but if we zoom in and look around the edge we can see that we've got razor sharp edges and that's thanks to the pen tool and the power of paths. So this is a very, very good path that we've created here. Now let's go ahead and deal with these interior sections. We've got one, two, three sections here that we're going to need to work with. I'm going to first 
throw away this layer mask, and we'll go back to our original layer, and we'll make sure that we've got our original path active here in the Paths panel. Now let's zoom in a little bit closer, and with this path selected, that means that any new paths that we create are also going to be created on this same path, this same working path. So I'm going to switch back to the Pen tool, and I'm going to come up here to my options, and I'm going to change this to Subtract from Shape. Now any new paths that we draw will be subtracted from this shape area. So we can drop in a point there, a point here, and we can work our way around this interior section. And I'm just going to do this quickly. If I were trying for accuracy, I would probably zoom in a little bit more closely, but I just want to give you the idea of how this works. So I'll go ahead and close this path, and we can see here in the Paths panel that we've actually subtracted from that area as we want it. Again, we could go back in here and reposition these points if we need to, just to get them a little more accurate. But we've knocked out that interior section. Now if we load this as a selection, and again click here to add a layer mask, we can see that now that area has been knocked out. And again, we can see a little bit rough around the edges here, where I wasn't zoomed in and following the contours correctly, but that's the idea. We can drop this layer mask in the trash once again, and we'll go back, select this path. Again, make sure that we've got subtract front shape selected, and we'll drop in a new path right here in the center of this bearing. So there, once again, we've got a path where we've subtracted that section from the selected area. Let's go ahead and add one more quickly here in this section, remembering that we're still working in the mode where we've subtracted from the path area. I'm going to need to zoom in here a little bit to pick up the thread of this screw, do our little zigzag, come back around, and finish this off. And there's our path. Let's zoom back out, control click or command click on this path, and add our layer mask, and there's our final image. We've now been able to completely mask this micrometer from its background using the pen tool in Photoshop, and we've got a very good, very well-defined, and very strong mask created as a result. We could use this path not only to mask this selection, but we could use it to extract the selection as well. So there you have a practical application of the pen tool in Photoshop, creating a path that you can use for masking or for extracting. That wraps up our course on the pen tool, and by now you should be an expert as well. So get out there and start drawing those paths. My name is Mike Hoffman. My website is hoffmanartdesign.com. You'll find a variety of Photoshop, photography, and Lightroom tips, tricks, and other information there. You can follow me on Twitter at mhoffman2001, and you can find me on Google Plus by going to gplusmikehoffman.com. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and this series.